Hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode 7 of You, Me, and the State of Guangdong about infrastructure. How pointless. Lam Han Su, Hao Xun, on break once again, heard that the Legislative Council was discussing something rather really boring, something for which it makes the stakes were quite low. The question of infrastructure with a view on linking the three pearls to the outlying cities. This was, of course, well beneath his notice. He's a police officer, not a blue driver, so or bus driver, so he was about to think about something else when a colleague of his interrupted him. Ah, oh, Xion, you told me sometime back you finally had family out there. Don't you ever think of going back? Lamb shook his head, did it once, can't do it again for a good while, not worth to do it often. Pro the officer pressed him further, why not? Lamb replied, first, my, wa my life is here now, second, it's not worth the trouble. One or two days driving and walking there, and then another two days going back, it's workable, simple as. Not to mention, I simply don't have the vacation time lying around for that. If I took all my leave, I literally wouldn't have to spend time with them. All I can do is send them money. The officer nodded in sympathy and joined Lamb in getting back to work. But as Lamb worked, he kept wondering about whether something could be done about it. So right now, we're still looking pretty good overall. Um, we're not doing great, but we're not doing bad, honestly. We have military advisors once again. Uh, product Echo is still growing from the last one, which is decent. We're almost in 1966 already. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, not bad. We're doing efficient transport infrastructure. We currently have 50 boats already because we, did, we didn't cheat or anything. Not yet. Not the cons we haven't used cons commands yet in this campaign. But I did already do some bribes down here uh, for seats. So we're looking pretty decent already. It's very, very good. And the Public Works Ordinance. As Chief Executive can only greenlight so many projects on the margins of the annual budget debate in the Legislative Council. Infrastructure projects and public works are measured in years of completion, not months. And if any of our most ambitious plans for Guangdong to be realized in full, we need to ask the Legislative Council to authorize a multi-year development plans. That way, even if Marie Dunn Lee should fall from grace, the successors will still be required to work with the development of a blueprint left behind, a viable form of institutional memory. Kakegurui. Kakegurui? I could have done that one too, but whatever. Yeah, we have a lot of corruption actually right now, which is really bad, so... Not good, but we're looking pretty good for audiovisual stuff. So that's 178 days is left for that one. Hiroshi Yamauchi said at the opposite end of the fine yet daunting mahogany table inside a luxurious mini room facing not one but two of Guangdong's most affluent captains of industry. Suddenly, Ho, the king of gambling himself, and Li Kaxing, the head of Chong Kong's holdings. Being in the same room with them would make the most people nervous, especially when they're trying to eke out an agreement between them and a company like Nintendo, but not Yamauchi. He sat there stern, confident and resolute as he explained the details of mutual benefits that an agreement between them and Nintendo would have, being professional and straightforward as he conversed with the two men. And that is why we Nintendo believe that a deal between us and your companies would be mutually beneficial. Thank you for your time, gentlemen, he remarked respectfully, reaching up from across the table to hand them documents and financial projections for the deal of the two men. It's all wonderful, Mr. Yamauchi, but what interests me the most is that you decided to personally ask to meet us rather than our representatives. I'd love to hear your answer why. Cushing replies, skimming through the papers Yamauchi had handed him. Yamauchi cleared his throat and paused for a moment. Yes, sir, I decided to personally meet with you both because this deal is tremendously important to Nintendo. And I do not feel right trying to sell a mutually beneficial deal to just some representatives. I'm not afraid to say that we at Nintendo have been struggling, but because we are struggling, we are prepared to go the extra mile for everything, including the products. And that's why I wanted to meet with you both, to prove that Nintendo is a first-rate company worthy of your cooperation. He replied, bowing his head towards them. Well, then, Mr. Yamauchi, you have yourself a deal to produce your wonderful handful of hand cards and some other gambling equipment on the side, maybe even some electronics with Pachinko, he equipped. Sending the papers as did Kaxing, a very lucky man, he remarked. At that moment, Yamauchi left catharsis. Felt catharsis. He had, le had left luck to hunger. Heaven. And now I was rewarding him handsomely with an illustrious feature for Nintendo. A good gamble. The day after uh, a couple things happened. Okay, let's see. Up here. Jungle. This is jungle, right? So you go in here. You should, in theory, get more tracker stuff, but this is going to be going up. Because we need to be finding jungle, and that is jungle terrain. So we're not getting the benefits that we should be getting, which it seems not right. Unless I'm doing this wrong. And we'll do this one real quick, too. Uh, yeah, you're pretty low, as is. But more political power is nice. Uh, but yeah, it says... Oh, well, we have perform mountain operation. Fight it. Oh, exceeding 30 degrees. Well, how are we supposed to know that? It's very hot. Are you jungle? Yeah, you are. Because we have a commando and jungle route, which is nice, but uh, still. Um, other than that, what else do we have here? We could do this one, but it's only 1.5, which is not much. It's still good to do, but I'd rather just wait for the big ones to do it, honestly. There goes those guys. Goodbye. Hello. Oh, did we get it, actually? We did. Nice. Um, who's left? Is it up here? Oh, no. It's, uh... Up here. There you go. Very good. Poverty's getting worse, though. 
the road to prosperity. I was a city in Koshu with a small girl to be clear for once, and Lee Kashin was in outdoors enjoying it. To be exact, he was personally observing the work of a work group paving a road that would connect Koshu to one of the outlying cities. His driver was bemused at his decision of this. The man was used to seeing his employer do strange things, but took care took care took the cake for him. This one did. So much so in fact that I had to ask about it. With all due respect, Mr. Lee, and please forgive the question, but what do we really want to be standing around here watching these people break through the backs of the road? Lee smiled and laughed shortly. Well, yes, I do want to be here. I'll, it'll help keep everyone honest. The workers will work hard under my watchful eye, and the super supervisors, doing just how well I tolerate the abuse, will make sure to treat them fairly. The driver nodded in understanding, and Lee continued. Besides, it's important for me to see the results of my plans on the old road. It took just two hours to get here. Say nothing in the city on the other end of the road, but when we're done here, three lanes on each side, we'll be able to get here from Koshu in an hour. Goods and people will be able to drive faster than ever. At this point, Lee smirked, and his voice became conspiratorial, and it's going to make us a heck of a lot of money. The driver himself smirked at his employer's argument. Good point, sir. Time is money, after all, and we're making human geography. Much of Guangdong's populace remains in rural villages and towns over lands of no material value, living with minimal interference from the Guangdong government, except when the Kenpai Tai conduct one of their own infamous sweeps of the countryside. Unsurprisingly, these villages and townships do not contribute to Guangdong's economy or government revenue, and worse, we serve as hubs for dissident activity. For the sake of economic advancement and just for knowing what's going on in our territory, the government must find a way to incorporate these sediments into Morita's new society. Matsushita's request. Chief Executive uh, Morita watched Matsushita's Masaharu's mouth move, his lips flapping about like a sheet of paper in the wind, without the faintest interest in the actual words being said. Matsushita had pulled Morita aside after the morning cabinet meeting, promising just five minutes to discuss mutual concerns, and he had launched into a sales pitch that was already running into his tenth minute. Ostensibly, it just been about marketing the public works and an infrastructure ordinance to the investors Matsushita had to face day in, day out. But Matsushita had prattled on about the lack of details in the project master list, losing Morita's attention instantly. He'd been given the same information as anyone else. And if Morita knew who to, what to present, there's no way Matsushita didn't either. Of course, Matsushita had constantly offered the services of his surveyors and experts to conduct additional legwork on contract if Morita was so inclined, or the expertise of his construction friends but to provide costing and feasibility estimates on plan project, but not for free. A vote was never for free. Uh, do I have your votes? We have 50. So for this one, we have enough votes. We have Matsushita. I'll just basically us, Chong Kong, and Matsushita. It's good. At the same time, this will give us more growth, add more debt, add more admin efficiency, which is good, become more centralized. Uh, due to rails and roads amendment, we get what infrastructure, uh, increased Chinese Zuzhin government support, and more growth as well, which is very good. So, we have another meeting. Oh, we need a 26.69 billion. Oh, we have past 27 billion. Beautiful. Just like us. There we go. This is good to do. It's actually his offer. And what exactly did you want to talk about? Uh, Chief Executive Morita sized up Komai Kanichiro, seat opposite of Morita out at the Chief Executive's desk. It's unusual to have anything to say to me outside the regular meetings of the five companies. Oh, just let go business. Komai flashed a predatory smile as he like a cigarette without Morita's prompting. How oh, you seem to be having trouble getting your little ordinance over the line. How oh, nice of you to notice, Morita said flatly. No, oh, my bad. Let me get back and get that one out here. No need to be polite with me, Morita. Komai gave a mirthless chuckle as he finished, fixing Morita with a steely glare. Hitachi's willing to show the construction costs associated with the initiative, so long as we receive the lion's shares of the contract to work. Good old-fashioned favor trading, the bread and butter of Lego business. And to do it at Manchurian prices is if you'll need extra incentive. Komai added, if you look after my interests, I'm going to look after yours just once. But despite what Komai says, Morita thought absently he'd be giving Hitachi a shot in the arm in the longer term. A, a proposition that unsettled him as much as the prospect of a few more votes in the Legislative Council. Have his contract some money. Um, give him the experience in Manchuria, they'll help us out, but it's Hitachi. Do you honestly trust them? Well, I don't trust most people, so probably not. Tell, just tell him to leave. And I apologize for that. That usually doesn't happen. And I'm usually on top of the ball when that when that stuff does happen. But my apologies for that. Um, even though it wasn't a huge deal. Hey, you know. So right now, we're slowly catching up to uh, Manchuria. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty cool. Where the heck are you guys? Come on. Get your... Get your... Oh, boy. Get your butts going. They're getting there. They're just taking their sweet booty time. Oh, oh, we lost the product cycle. I hate it. I hate when we lose the product cycle. That just means there's, an there's another product cycle that we have to eventually end up doing too. Which is not bad. But now we've sold both to China and Japan twice. Which means we're not going to settle them anymore. I think, like I said earlier in the last episode, let's sell to Italy now. We sell 50. Yep, that's good. We don't need any more. Beautiful. 1938, a pillar of smoke over the horizon. Several weeks ago, Lam had heard that the Japanese made Lam Fong Guangzhou. The division scouring over the villages had doubted the coastline for supplies and pillage. Stories from fleeing refugees painted images of men in khaki colored uniforms waving bolt action rifles, the sun seeming to bake the ground beneath them. Pillars of smoke stood over the horizon, a call of distress. 
Lamb and his uncle, a uh, quick in their step, the firework on, firewood on their backs, raking a toil on their backs. Through late autumn, uh, they walked, imprinted their footsteps on the fresh wet soil. Branches snapped, the underbrush rustled in their wake. They saw the wooden roofs of the village, standing tall, intact, and they laughed, or not laughed, but sighed, at least with relief. However, just beyond the gates, those men in khaki-colored uniforms stood, waving the rifles of the civil villagers. Hands were raised, some in alarm, others in defiance, from the windows of the barrel of the musket gleaming in the soldiers, ready to fire, of course. The Japanese left shortly after, bolts of silk in their hands, the rifles in their hands, so pointed towards the village. The uncle chased after them to the soldier's alarm. After two minutes of mis uncommunicative exchange, the officer offered him a quizzical look, and then spoke something that Lamb would spend a lifetime trying to recall. In a flash, the officer raised and cocked his rifle, firing at a point-blank range on the uncle's right foot. He screamed while the Japanese marched away laughing. The rest of the village rushed at the sound and bore Uncle to his home. Lamb heard him mutter, first Guangzhou, now us, over and over. N things would never be the same again. Also, we'd have a cup of green tea here to keep us nice and uh, refreshed in passage of the work. The day was an unusual day in the Legislative Council. No other adjective could describe a day in which Matsushita Masaharu, of all people, was going to bat to defend a state faction ordinance and his team doing a fairly darn good job of it. Ladies and gentlemen, let us try to understand the benefits that this proposal has for us and our companies, no matter what differences we have. Better infrastructure, that be power lines, roadways, is a no-brainer for keeping our factories and manufacturing empires profitable. This proposal is even more than a no-brainer in light of the fact that it's the state and not us who will be footing the bill for its execution. Those that oppose it are frankly out of their minds. Ibuka Masoto made his disapproving, disapproval clear. If opposing this asinine proposal makes me a lunatic, then tie me up in a straitjacket and take me to a mental hospital right away after this meeting. Quite frankly, I question exactly why Mr. Matsushita is here to be so zealous defending a deal from which the Li Kaxing and Stanley Ho stand and benefit the most. At this point, the outraged shouts jeering a contemptuous laughter of not two but three delegations, Sony and Chong Kong, joined by Matsushita, assailed Ibuka with such force that he actually quailed on his force to sit down. It book was very clearly in the minority this time, that brought a well, feeling of warmth and happiness to Morita's heart as he watched the boats come in, passing the ordinance by a decisive marching. As the boat was entered, he resolved to invite Li, Ho, and Matsushita to a celebratory dinner. The four of them and the families enjoyed themselves well that night. Absolutely beautiful. So what you want? Incorporate the villages. And this is Li Kaxing's argument. Look at the factories close to the rural workers. Has 30% of Cheong Kong seats in support of it. Increases Chinese government support. Let's say by 0.5%. Increases Chinese opinion. More growth and co more cost, but new industrial communities. Factories shall mainly lie on the three pearls at more Sony seats. 0.2. But increases Chinese opinion, though. Zhijin support goes up, but you get Chinese support here, too. Which is, I mean, Zhijin support's more important for us. Um. But you get more Chinese opinion, which is not bad. I mean, having Chinese opinion is very good, too. Don't get me wrong. Where are we at right now? So we have quite a bit of corruption. They are 81%. Honestly, getting more Chinese support sounds more fun because you get annual GDP growth factor, more monthly Chinese government support, and quarterly report of the police influence in each affected region. We'll probably go with that one. Incorporate the villages. This approach to the issue of unincorporated townships is simple. Simply incorporate them by the fiat of the government. What a spatial contingent of consensus takers and bureaucrats escorted by the police now they can't buy time to these villages and take inventory. By the time we're done, we'll know who lives there, who is in charge, and most importantly, we will have to remind the villages of their obligation to the government. And they begin doing the work that the Guangdong requests of them to host factories, provide police, collect tax, and then the state can provide services to them and to improve the lives of the people. Because right now we'll only 38%. Um, even though it makes more sense to do Sony, I guess. 70%, 70%, uh, we get five more votes. That's gonna be pretty hard to pass. Tabloid phenomenon, secrets revealed. Camp Patai officers admits a shocking deal with Chinese narcotics peddlers. A lone wolf, Colonel Miyazaki denies all involvement with a rogue uh, agent, complicit or incompetent. Protect your citizens, not your wallets. Bloated salaries and wa washing streets with drugs. Is this what you want your tax to spend on? Thousands of tons of Manchurian shipping arrive every day. How many are drug ships? Betrayal, who polices the military police? Commissioner, promise is crime sweep, no comments from Camp Patai. More on page three. Ooh. To increase the level of corruption by 8%, Japan's approval goes down, which is four, sucks, but less can't buy time proof of the corruption. Good. Men and I shift. One Kinyon took care to uh, appear innocuously delayed as he peeled away from the gaggle of men coming out the factory floor. It was past 11, the yawning security guards were taken uh, or as keen as anyone else to hurry home, and one of the few days that the night shift was cut mercilessly short. Mercifully short. For 20 minutes, Wong waited as the throng of workers dispersed until the last of the overseers he heaved shut the factory door, shutting the floodlights off. As his eyes adjusted, Wong watched a new few men pull step back into the open. Lao, the welder, pulled together stools in a tight circle around Impromptu's cardboard table. Jung, the machinist, laid out some bowls borrowed from the cafeteria. And the, Ip, the assembler, groaned as he put down a makeshift platter of turnip cake, dumplings, and a few oranges. It was small, but it was free. It was well known that there would be nothing for them in their Spartan company dormitory. And the cooks had understood hiding the plate in the kitchen refrigerator for them to retrieve later. Finally, Wong brought his contribution a smuggled bottle of cheap rice wine. Lacking in everything but potency, they assembled company clock quietly as Wong poured each man a small serving. 
And not any, any other day, they were nameless cogs in the machine, taken from their homes and families of the country to feed the hunger of the three pearls, but for one night. Under the faint red glow of the emergency lights, they could finally be a family of their own. Gong Hai Fat Choi. Cool. Yaga influence. Oh, it's back up here. That's not good. They have, like, no police presence, though. So. 0.5. 0.3. 1.39. It, it, we're just getting there. We're getting there. So, who else are we fighting, then, here? Ah, over here, huh? Make your way over there. That's 30% support to cease. A contingency. The golden light seeped its way through the blind, ending softly in the face of Kuno Miyazaki. The faintest hit of calm in an ocean of administrative chaos. Several... Ooh. Well, if you want to buy advancements of data storage technology, please go ahead. How can, this can fit how many pieces of paper? I love data storage devices. How great. <coughs> uh, my apologies about that. Uh, several days of rel res relentless giving and repeating orders. Boxes being ran back and forth between the paper shredder and the incinerator. Phone calls bearing from IJA Command in Guangdong, Camp IJA Command in Tokyo, and all sorts of random jokers with enough influence to find his number. He hadn't had a good night sleeping all that time, of course. For the sake of his sanity, had this had to end soon, maybe some light uh, some light would help, perhaps. Let's hope so. He opened the blinds, a full view of Koshu appearing before him. Miyazaki witness uh, stray black dots bumble their way through the streets amongst buildings whose size and regularity served to obfuscate any sense of meaning. Everything looked exactly like it did yesterday, and how it would look in the next month, and Miyazaki did not like what he saw. Their first and best chance to rectify the situation either to the vine and the local branch were too busy with damage control to succeed alone. So much for his career, but no use putting it off. He picked up the phone dog, Sits King. Miyazaki, is it? Come tell me your failure and our need to clean up after your mess. Miyazaki considered arguing and then thought of a better of it. Yes, sir. Well, lucky boy that you are, we already have contingency in motion. Working from within this time, an amount of money will be sent to you shortly. Make sure it ends up in the right hands. Sir, yes, sir. Good. And very good. Industrial development ordinance. We must codify a new approach to the unincorporated villages and towns of Guangdong's laws so that we don't face an avalanche of criticism from the other corporations like so many vultures circling the next sorts of disposable bodies for the sweltering factories by passing an approach into law through the Legislative Council. We can hopefully end the practice of undocumented evictions and wholesale relocations of entire villages and the periodic cleanup required while still ensuring that we maximize the use of our labor force in the name of industrial development. Shifting alliances. Oh, crap. This day's wave of endless tide of intrigue and whispers within the Legislative Council surrounded the sudden shifting loyalties of certain lawmakers. Three faces had advanced from the usual caucuses, and three had in turn appeared in Hitachi's contingent. Soon all the whispers were asking the same questions. How much could Hitachi get paid them, they asked each other? That was an inevitable question. The men in question had so abruptly crossed the aisle that something had to have lubricated the shift in their mind. How much can I get for myself? Where do I look? They asked themselves. The tide have shifted one more. They've gone too far. They'll try to include their go through subversive means and buying seats. No longer give Hitachi the product cycle and fear of a coup. Shnackies. Bribe her own. Definitely there, yep. Yeah. Uh, where's the GUI for this? Ah! Continues to grow, huh? Well, where are we at now? We lost. Oh, god dang it, that sucks. We're definitely going to need Matsushita seats. Um, investigate if it counts. A record number of LEGO members are pledging their allegiance to Hitachi. Despite the company's record books looking completely normal. Perhaps a second pass will reveal potential discrepancies and bribe them. We can always play the game of bribery in Guangdong. Whatever Hitachi's intentions may be, we can shift a little cash to certain LEGO members and get them back on our side, not Hitachi's. And threaten the reps. If cash doesn't work in Guangdong, the threats of violence are another try and true method of convincing LEGO members to align with their vision, not Hitachi's. Well, I don't mind doing at least this one first. C Coddling peasants? I was a cloudy, rather smuggy day in Koshu, and Yasukawa Yoshiko was taking out the, of the Guangdong government headquarters in search of that good story to break. It had been a slow day, so much so in fact that Yoshiko was only a short distance from throwing her hands up and heading home for the day when she overheard a few men complaining as they walked out of the building. It was a pair of legislative council members, both wearing lapel pins that Yoshiko suspected indicated a Fujitsu affiliation, and they were angry with the chief executive's recent plans, as most Fujitsu delegates tended to be most of the time. Yoshiko knew. One of them began to growl to his friend. That good for nothing, so so called chief executive, he and his liberal bleeding heart are going to run us all of business the moment the Manchurians come after us. Everyone in Guangdong who has even 1% of the brain cell knows that we can't play nice with the common folk if we want to fight Manchukuo with its own terms, but there goes Marita, coddling peasants and hearing them out rather than bring Guangdong into the modern age. This dive trap piqued Yoshiko's curiosity. Going to a bullet train on, uh, bulletin board on the front of the wall of the compound, she read the day's agenda, books on the development of a certain town in Guangdong. She decided to pay a visit the next week. A journalist works is never done. Not that much power. I do want to do this one though, but 
966 Economic Review. Chief Executive Morita Akeo leaned back in his chair, smiling faintly as Consul General Takashima Masuo took a seat opposite him, holding the 966 copy of Guangdong's economic data. They both knew the thick tomb's contents in advance, and Takashima only made a cursory show of idly turning his pages before setting it aside. Guangdong has met all its economic targets for the last year again, Takashima said, with a wry smile tucking on his lips. Industrial output, factory investment, export revenues, all indicators show an economy performing at its best. Tokyo is very pleased. Chief Executive Morita Akeo nodded, letting the Consul, uh, Consul General's praise settled considerably within him. Of course, Guangdong had met the expectations set out by his stakeholders. Between his policies and efforts of the companies, Guangdong had proven it could perform economic alchemy and would do so for however, however long was required. The two men uh, convened for another 15 minutes, the two largely exchanging compliments conversing in generalities about the coming year's economic initiatives. The meeting was, of course, to end early, as the conversation petered out with Takashima fiddling with his glasses waiting to be excused. Get back to work. So we need 30 billion. Holy crap. That's going to be tough. But we got three more seats, which is nice. In the meantime, as well, uh, they should not have 35 any we're close to 35 so that's actually looking better for us now we have 40 which is nice but we'll definitely have to probably give into uh matsushita probably at least a little bit as we're going to cut these guys down as much as we possibly can in the meantime uh, i've read that one before probably several times i just it's hard to tell for me which one i read or not so mm -hmm. use a bit of power jurisdiction friction with their eyes or glares watchful and uniforms well pressed, the men of the Camp Pai waited their next order. They knew exactly what would follow every moment had been carefully choreographed weeks in advance. As the knowledge of drugs became <clears throat> uh, uh, being stored in this location been withheld from the police for months, they certainly had more than enough time to drill the plans into themselves. <coughs> Three sharp whistles blast later, a confined cacophony was let loose. The bullets streaked in and flailed uh, aimlessly out. The final shouts of the gangsters were smothered by the charge of the Camp Pai and silence returned the streets a great deal more than ever before. The hall from the inside was paraded with the rows of peering eyes and now hid far from the streets. <clears throat> the message had been made. The Kenpai Tai were the law and nothing would be allowed to get in their way, not even the police. The police can only clean up after the Kenpai Tai. Hey, we're looking really good here. We got positives on everything. Nice. So you don't want that one. You go here. Just hold for now. You have support. Oh, this is this is a different. Oh. So what are we missing here? Mountain, jungle. Oh, that's still a mountain. Ticker tap dance. Matsushita's malfunctions multiply now. No end in sight. Fujitsu fumbles yet again. Sony stock slips and slides. Amid the sensational headlines, there was an uncomfortable amount of truth. Reports from each of the three of these companies had carried a similar section of disappointing returns over the last quarter. Uproar spread like wildfire between the markets. The media and stock prices had taken a slump. Um, yeah, the same extent of the reversal fortunes was not met by Hitachi, whose price held firm at whilst all others wavered. Soon another phrase would appear again and again in the headline, a vote of confidence in the ensuring quality. Come on, man. Perhaps it was just Lux, perhaps not, that didn't matter. Guangdong was, con was has come to need any sign of hope from its businesses, no matter the place. Hitachi wins again, outside of interference. Bruh, come on. High-ranking military officials were driving in a new expensive Mitsubishi Debonairs. Legislative council members were sporting new watches, as Morito... Morita Akeo entered his office in the council chambers to get to start the day's work. He was greeted by a white grin from one of the policemen guarding his door, revealing a golden tooth where last week there had been nothing. Many money was in the air, like ozone before a thunderstorm. Unsurprisingly, the first report of the day came from his whip. Hitachi was at it again, flushing money into the country at an alarming pace, where it had been only a stepped up instance of the usual horse trading that went on in Guangdong, but now it reached part portion, suggesting something deeper was at play. The moment it was threatening Guangdong's top military men and influential legislative council members, yes, but also the colonels of the garrison regiments surrounding the capital, as well as senior bureaucrats in the government departments. Bribery on this sort of scale cannot be the work of Hitachi alone, the whip concluded. Most likely, both Mangyo and Nissan were assisting. As the whip left the room, Morito Akio puzzled over the possibilities. These were hard-nosed businessmen who spent every day ringing dimes and nickels out of the destitute Chinese factory workers. It wasn't in their nature to be so prolific, but whatever their ultimate aim, Hitachi wasn't the only company with money here in Guangdong, attempting to bring their own wallet. Jesus, where are we at? Okay, so we're still there. That's not bad. We didn't lose anything, technically. But god dang, I hate, I hate Hitachi. What the heck are you doing? Soft targets. Representatives of the Legislative Council have never found themselves in any other position than the defensive, whether for the corporation's interest or more importantly their own. Not a single back was safe from the many knife wielding hands amongst them. So often the only defensive move left to play was retreat. The resignation letters had to be updated regularly for the moment the anxiety of the chamber could change to those of the end to the XL until those of XL. The resignations ran on the back of sharp white printer paper littered the place no more than ever. You know the wave of losers has since been chased out of town, tails between their legs. 
In fact, the only matter of a ordinary was the number of Hitachi men being named as replacements. The eyes of the counselors left saying were raised alongside their anxieties as no doubt planned how to best save their own skins once again. Him. What the heck is going on? I can't, we can't fight this. We can do this as much as we can, but I don't want any more corruption. We have to do all this. Like, this is crap. Are you kidding me? Wait. Zero out of 25. And it also says 25 out of 35. This is a little bugged. Yuki Aki. The prominent artist Hirata Shodo appeared out of the Hong Kong building where the Japanese consul general was exhibiting his paintings for a glimpse of his son. The place was far more bustling than he remembered or being told in the past. It was harder for him to see anybody, let alone the man he was looking for. As far as anyone but Consul General Takashima, a good friend of his younger, less complicated days, knew. Hirata had simply accompanied his paintings in support of a greater East Asia ministry uh, cultural exposition. But in reality, though, showing people of his works was always good and well. Hirata was looking for a son who he had known as Hirata Masaharu. He didn't have much time left. He hadn't seen his son in years. He knew that ever since he'd gotten married to that corporate heiress. Well, Saharu hadn't had any time to keep in touch. But Harata's views was that he had at least tried to keep in contact with his son one way or another. Going back inside, Harata was distracted from his reverie by a man examining his paintings with the kind of gaze Harata knew to be that of a painter, appraising a colleague's work. Being somewhat naive, he assumed the man was a Japanese and introduced himself in that language. The man, speaking with a very slight accent, Harata had to strain to notice, introduce himself in fluent Japanese. Len Feng Mian, at your service, Mr. Harata. Then Feng Mian, he knew that name. That was sort of the name of a prominent Chinese artistic master. One whose work had been destroyed by a reckless soldier during the war, only for him to remake it from the scratch and exhibit it left, right, and center throughout post-war China. Confirmed with such a luminary of his art, what could he do but not, not but nod respectfully as Lin responded the very same. Like, bruh. Inflation just dropped off the end of the earth. That's nice. But, bruh. The new villages. It was probably clouded in the outlying villages where, uh, <clears throat> Yasukawa Yoshiko, escorted as always by the policeman she knew as Hayashi Kosen, was sitting down to interview a young man who started working in a Sony workshop that had been set up just outside his village. The young man at his grasp was satisfied with, uh, with his lot, all things considered. Moreover, Yoshiko was able to catch distinctly more of what was being said with her attritionally improving Cantonese. They set it up so that anyone who can't afford education gets a job at the workshop. We do small tasks, make small parts, and what, we, and what have you. And all that we get sends back to the big factories down in the Koshu and the like, those three pearls or whatever they call them. Yoshiko nodded. How do you like the work? The young man chuckled. Oh, it's hard work, I'll tell you that for free. The, and the managers are strict and really have harsh quality standards. We get allowed exactly 6 o'clock each evening. Sometimes we get the tools taken out of our hands when the hour hits, and send home to our families, that alone. The early hour of uh, being let out, which I'm told nobody has had back in the day, is more than enough to keep us from coming back no matter how harsh those managers are. Also, the pay's good. Good enough, in fact, that I might even be able to expand, expand the family home if I save up for a couple months. <clears throat> You should go thank the young man and let him go back to his business. And then she turned to the silent figure of officer, officer Hayashi and asked him what she what he thought. Miss Sas, it as it turned out, was fairly, fairly simple. That's a hard life, make no mistake about it, but it's a life. All the better that they get better with the families, or they get to stay with the families. Yoshiko nodded in agreement. That was what I was thinking too. Oh, bro, Hitachi needs to die. You just don't get enough political power. Oh, we could reform the civil service. I want to do that, but we don't have the political power. We got we got save it. Um, we can meet the representatives. They might like us, they might not. We could try it. You know what? Do we just save two? Well, in any case, it goes poorly. A lot of debt. They do like us quite a bit. Even though the Chinese are not really angry at us either. We can try it. Meet the Japanese representatives? We'll try. I've never tried, not tried this one yet. And Sony, well... Obviously, we can't do very much about it right now. <clears throat> the Challengers. <coughs> As Damocles was so memorably shown by Dionysus of Syracuse, power is never secure. It's an intangible thing, twisting and curling, planning itself in the minds of men, anticipating seemingly at random, and the image of a fresh refracted through water, quite never where it seems to be of, uh, never quite behaving the way you expect. It takes cunning, ambition, and drive to manage a touch of power. It takes genius and good luck to capture fully, to bend it to one... A uh, well in such a way that it remains unchallenged, even then, time's ever rolling stream will at some point or another wash it all away. No such good luck has been afforded the chief executive. His three challenges, the Barracuda Circulum, has not given up their efforts to oust him and replace him with one of their own. With a seemingly endless, limitless supply of funds, they chip away the exterior of the Mor Morita, a chaos edifice, one nibble at a time. Uh, with every piece that falls away from the monolith, the chief executive's abstract measure of authority over the legislative council weakens slightly. The will of the wisps darts away, perhaps providing an opportunity for one of his opponents to grasp it should they have the wills wits to do so. As favors are exchanged, opinions swayed on the council floor, Marita Akeo must intervene in Shorpa's position, or else he is gripped on history's coattails slip, sluice, slip loose, leaving him at the mercy of time's cold, cold dark tide. Oh, come on. Come on. Pattern recognition. Just drive. I don't care where. Just could be to Moscow if you want, as you wish, chief executive. 
A police commissioner looked out of the tinted windows towards the Koshu Marina. Despite the best and brightest Guangdong's efforts, the neon signs that clamor for attention had the millions of would-be customers and should have been regulars only, uh, could only tinge the fog that smothered them. Inside of the car was nothing special. Same cream upholstery, same plush seats as what an aged salary man could expect to find in a taxi, of course. That's what made it peculiar at all, considering who he was sitting beside. Commissioner said Chief Executive did not look at him. Instead, craned downwards to the mess of dossiers and files that laid at his feet. Too messy to have been organized by secretary, at least a competent one. That was all him. This was all him. When I first took up his job, I was told by my colleagues that this was a fool's errand, that this task of cleaning up the streets of our little corner of the world was a Sisyphean one. The police commissioner did not say anything, only nodding his head to signify they've been ca catching every word. That the walls of the door would be too strong to keep back at bay. Look at poor Suzuki. Best of by forces that he could not understand. When the place stopped spinning, the only thing he could do was to fall, fall, fall to the ground. But I'm not Suzuki Taichi, I'm a commissioner. The car stopped, making a gentle turn into a dense dark alleyway, still idling but now waiting for its master to fill its purpose. I am not Suzuki Taichi, and I'm not one some effing puppet that they can just cut the strings and leave me to die. His hiss voice began to rise in crescendo. I'm the chief executive, and I'll put them down like the dogs that they are. We both know who they are, don't we, Commissioner? The police commissioner turned to face the chief executive and simply handed him a manila folder before unlocking the door to leave. Hitachi, chief executive, we're fighting Hitachi. Literally just fighting Hitachi. What's good for Japan, though? Cigarette. Takashima offered one across the table, still not reflecting off his glasses. I was later in the day now, the sun at a lower angle, and the orange light slanted to reflect that, painting the wall in shades of color. If either man had taken a moment to admire it, they'd certainly have found some beauty in the scene, as it was, though. Their thoughts were focused on more material things. No, thank you. We can ascertain that soon transistors will pass through Nagasaki on the way to the international market. Taking our terror situation into account, Japan will take a good 10% share, and the rest will be moved into the open market. Ah, one issue with that, Chief Executive, Takashima murmured sheepishly, retracting the cigarette and slipping it into the pack he had taken it from. Electronic firms on the home islands have taken issue with the tariff exceptions which Guangdong corporations are granted. Oh, please, Morito Akeoxiaz, each time I talk to you, Consul General, it always becomes apparent, or becomes about what the Zaibatsu are complaining about now. I can't cripple our exports so to satisfy them. I know, I know. Now the bureaucrats uh, put up his hand to resign, in resigned deference. It isn't fair to you, but they have Tokyo's ear, Chief Executive, and Tokyo would like you to engage in voluntary export restraints. They'll pay you for it, and they'll certainly be appreciative of your cooperation. Morito Akeo frowned, staring daggers at the Consul General. A thought clicked together. That cigarette was your idea of an apology, wasn't it? It seemed curious, Takashima mumbled, putting a hand on his forehead. To the courtesy of adding an extra zero to the check they'll send. Oh my god. Well, I can take the courtesy of telling them where my shoe will go if they ask for this again. Well, that was a waste of time then. The profitability goes down by 10%. Where are we at with Japan's approval? No, we'll do that one. Screw it. Well, I'll, yeah, that's time we probably won't do that one. Desperate measures. 35% and 5%. That's not worth it. Um, but I guess we'll see in just a little bit. Industrial Development Ordinance. Uh, I guess we'll have to keep going over here then. Rooting out corruption? Corruption in Guangdong isn't detested or reviled so much that it's accepted as an immutable fact of life like loan sharks, opium addicts, and the stench of piss behind Causeway Belt de Depot. It melts into the drab, dr drab gray concrete and fuses itself rebar deep. Always part of the background, but never the facade itself, except perhaps in price tags with extra zeros and gentlemen in tacky suits with an open palm in one hand and a gun in the other. The commissioner can talk all he wants, but as long as the boys in blue talk shop with gangsters in broad daylight, one Arsenal Street's talk is just that. Talk. Discredit hard. Uh, boiled cynicism was what kept Guangdong alive since 1945, but for the three pearls to thrive within his lifetime, the chief executive knows it must make do without. Somehow. Matsushita and Yubaka won in. The meeting of the chief executive's cabinet finished discussing government and business nearly ten minutes ago, only to have Matsushita Masaharu grandstanding in Morita's office. We won't talk about industrial development. The easiest thing to do is talk to everyone in the legislative council. Masushita waved his arms grandly in the air. Hope his actions would embellish his words. If you really want the industrial development in ordinance to help all of Guangdong, it'll be a lot easier to do it when everyone's on board. You made your point, Lee Grown, stealing a look at his wristwatch. For the last ten minutes, you made nothing but that point. I'm telling you, we'll take it under advisement. This shouldn't be a hard decision, more Matsushita shot back. Both Matsushita and Fujitsu are offering help. All I have to do is cut us in, nor is that too dangerous for your bottom line. The room felt icily silent after Matsushita's remarks, having laid bare the underlying divisions within Morita's cabinet. Now that was very difficult. Not that that was very difficult. But when business was politics and vice versa, it frees them out. But we well, only have 42 votes, so we, so we need everybody as much as we possibly can. Uh, getting these guys on board, 2 and 10, uh, would be super important for all this stuff here. Um, get, let them cut. Remove work the villages from the active ordinance. Oh. So we lose the increased go Chinese government support and increases growth by 0.25%. Increases Chong seats as well.
And as to cuts deal with M and I. Honestly, we need to do it. If we do that, which sucks, couldn't deal with M and I. So we get more Japanese expats for more governments. We can get a. We can't even get a pass with that. Are you kidding me? Bro. We didn't even get it done. Like, I I don't want to water. We had to water down. Like, that's that's such crap. Oh my god, it's so laggy. Because Hitachi is destroying us right now. My god. Um, desperate measures. Performed in civil service. I want to do that one too, but... There's nothing we can do. We still need one more to deal with it. I mean, we can get it, don't get me wrong. Probably bribe another Matsushita seat. The national team. The job of an outline is easy, managing investments on the behalf of the chief executive, but sometimes Ren thought he and Seymour set up to fail. Another F and drop? Uh, yeah, it happened almost an hour after we opened this morning. Multiple uh, large sale orders by people we've not been able to contact. Yeah, my team is trying, though. It triggered a number of sell other sell orders about an hour later, and we managed to keep the stock from dipping too low. But it's becoming too much to handle. The stock price won't be able to withstand too many more squ short squeezes. We think we should get some extra help. You're telling me someone's screwing with us, someone wants our company to fall. Or fail. Ren could think of people that could want that to happen. Ren wiped his forehead, his office had gotten too stuffy, and his suit clenched to him like a vice. Keep going. If I could put this forward, all, all these sell orders have been directed at each major company, Guangdong, aside from Hitachi. I believe that Hitachi might be the ones leading the massive sell orders that occurred this morning. Their stock has been mostly untouched by these sell orders. Hitachi has always been a vocal opponents against the chief executive and the company he represented. Ren should have seen this coming. It's too late to think about that. Sir, we have to make a choice. Tell the team that we're going to request a treasure, treasure to intervene. This is too much for us to handle. Hang on for as long as we can. Nope. Jiang Yang Kui Yu. Kui Kui Yu. Still 50. Still 50. Lin Feng Mian stuck around after the painted exhibition ended. It was late in the evening, and even Takashima had taken his leave, but Hirata Shoda left for himself no real choice but to sit down and talk with a man that he knew for a fact was a great luminary of art in the late 20th century. Hirata's curiosity was piqued by the contrast between his and Lin's painting styles, whereas Hirata's tendency was towards traditional Japanese Nihonga. Lin preferred Western-influenced modernist artworks. He went over that with Lin, who cheerfully discussed it with them, but it grew solemn as the conversation went on in Japanese. Hirata, of course, noticed and inquired what seems to be the issue. Guangdong-born Lin replied, sighing, It gives me to think that I had converse my homeland with another painter in a foreign tongue. Her did not really understand yet. He made his confusion known. But art surely transcends borders in human languages. Lin sighed, saying, Would that, would that were so, but even that, even the art that does as you say is inseparably influenced by the circumstances in which it is created. At that moment, Harada understood his colleague's feelings more clearly than not in understanding. The rest of the conversation proceeded pleasantly enough, and the two painters parted on good terms. Lin bade the other painter farewell with a respectful bow that carried a certain finality to it. For I knew the way the world was, that they would probably never see each other again. I hate H Hitachi so much. Are you finally here? Hitachi's off. And what exactly did you want to talk about, Chief Executive Morita Saza Komai Kenichiro? See the opposite uh, uh, Morita at the Chief Executive's desk. It's unusual for her to have anything to say to me outside of the regular meetings of the five companies. Oh, it's just like a business. Kamai flashed a predatory smile as he lit a cigarette without Morita's prompting. How oh, you seem to be having trouble getting your ordinance over the line. How nice of you to notice, Morita said flatly. We read this before. No need to be polite with me, Morita. Komai gave a mirthless trickle as he finished, fixing Morita with a steely glare. Hitachi is willing to shoulder the construction costs associated with the initiative, so long as we receive the lion's share of the uh, contract to work. Go to old-fashioned favorite trading, the bread and butter Lego business. And I'll do that mentoring prices if you need the extra incentive, Komai added. If you look like after my interests, then we'll look after yours just as once. But despite what Komai says, Morita thought absolutely, he'd be given a touchy shot on the arm in the longer term, a prop prop proposition that unsettled him as much as the prospect of a few more votes in the legislative council. Nope. Scenes from the Underworld 1, or I. In Koshu, two fledging Yakuza Kumen. Did I even. I already read this one too. Yeah. I read this one earlier as well. My god. This is just. Things are starting to collapse for us just a little bit. 70%, 59%, 50%. My god. And the product cycle starts in like 50 days. Like, what the heck are we supposed to do? Except attack the Yakuza, which we really can't overhear anymore. Kinda of does suck. Uh, 14. We still have 50 votes, which sucks. That we can't get what we really wanted, but <coughs> massive congestion at the Koshu airport. 
Let's complete chaos. There are 27 different aircraft that requested emergency landings, all intact from Manchuria. The first is supposed to arrive in 14 minutes, the last one only 47. Head air traffic controller, Yang Yichan, stood up from his desk, his voice failing him as he split, spit his cup of coffee. Send for a crap. All, have all outgoing flights canceled now and get the police. We're going to need them around. His deputy took in all the information and walked out on the tower's control floor. The news did not go very well. Judging by the panic sounds amongst the controllers, he would have to join them and help out with the workload. Less than five minutes later, a detachment of armored cars screeched to a stop outside the terminals, even as Yang had barely gotten control of the air traffic control team. Uniformed men marched into the control room as they were across. Across, across the rest of the airport, calming everyone down by the visible show of force, the captain introduced himself to Yang, revealing himself to be the head of the Camp Pate Regiment in Koshu, just close enough to hear this call for police reinforcements. We'll be taking control here, special orders from the government, all these flights will be taken in. How the runway is cleared off and all other flights cancelled, we're going to be here for a while. Yang blinked. We already cancelled all flights, sir. Captain smiled. Good ma'am. Order restored? Order restored. I hate, I hate Hitachi. I just want to make money and make the place better for China. Is that too much to ask for? Apparently. So is this mountain? Is this mountain? Yeah. Bro, you're gonna learn to what? We just need to pull you out immediately. Over form, yeah. Oh, so we need jungles now. Passage. Oh, at least we passed it. The debate on the industrial development ordinance began the Jeremiah by Koma Kenichiro. Ladies and gentlemen, the act of the chief executive is fully, folly piled upon folly. <clears throat> Uh, mentally deficient and disastrous innovation. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever that we others should be forced to foot the bill for the asinine Sony program of taking industry to the rural areas. Economies of scale and their mechan mechanics are self-evident to anyone with, with even a fifth of a brain cell. So then the chief executive, his company, and their assorted native hangers-on wish to indulge a patronizing overly liberal goodness of the heart so let them do it on their own dime with my blessing and encouragement. <coughs> This discourse, is, this discourse was Komai's first full-throated attack on virtually everything Morita had endorsed in the proposed ordinance, but it did not get the reaction that Komai had declared hope for. Only Ibuka's men were agreeing. As if to prevent his own men from going out of line with his own wishes, Matsushita stood to counter Komai's point. The previous chief executives made the stupid decision of leaving rural towns and villages with no natural resources to export and develop, even though there were plenty of perfectly good labor waiting to be put to use. What Mr. Komai doesn't remember in his old age is that you can try to fit so many niboshi in a jar and so many factories and workers on the three pearls. But now, Messrs. Komai... And Ibuka want to keep stuffing more workers in other earth superstructures. They can do so with my blessing. I, on the other hand, prefer a bit of open space to work with. Morita Akeo and Li Ka-shing joined the three delegations and laughed and applause as the voting began and the ordinance passed. Some days later, when Matsushita had to go, to go for a few hours without lunch, Morita gave him a bag of niboshi. Matsushita shook his head and chuckled in amusement. Man. We didn't get exactly what we wanted, but... That's what we have. Investing in our future. As their industries come to full speed of the willing contribution of the people, and as their corporations reap the profits in spite of the new restrictions they face, we're not face the question of what Guangdong should do with its profits. How should we make use of the fruits of the labor today to ensure continued prosperity tomorrow? There are a number of proposals on the table to best how to reinvest your wealth and ensure that the flows of riches never stop. You need to make money, or so they say, how best we should prepare Guangdong's future. In the dim light of his office, Chief Executive Morita Akeo leered at the documents that lined his desk. The burden of proof was such a powerful thing, wasn't it? High-definition scenes of Camp Hitachi squads intimidating airport staff and the Manchurian League cargo planes played across his mind. Why? Why would Hitachi try to pull off a scheme this large? They seemed to operate just fine after under his rule, but just as they did Manchukuo. Was somehow Manchukuo making Hitachi do this for some reason? Were they on the brink? The worst and increasingly the most likely reason for the Camp Hitachi Hitachi's escalation across the chief executive's mind. Of course it did. Try as he tried him. Might to dismiss it. The reason that everything was unfolding now was because of all of Hitachi's pieces were in place. All they needed was a coup de crawl. Shaking away the thought, Mokeo, Morita Akeo Radan. Meaningless jargon coalesced in a dread instilling antidote and reports at the end. The police commissioner who had written the report recommended four courses of action to deal with the power with the power play. The first was to reckon with the garrison in the camp Hitachi directly and bring them into the cold daylight. The second was to send out a feeler for contact within the Manchurian government and see whether they understand what's going on in Guangdong. The third and fourth method was to either go to Tokyo or Japan for help. While banking on support was a risky move, both nations had the power to move things the other way and help fully understand what was going on under our noses. There was a fifth option, of course, not seeing the report. There's always another option. I think get the right leads, switch the right arms, and it's appear to the right people. Perhaps we can do it ourselves. After all, what's going on for the shining monument to doing it to yourself mentality? And they all played. We can certainly oblige them. If we have proof of Kent Pai Tai a trickery, now it's time to use it. If the Manchurians are receptive, we might get somewhere. Tokyo has more than enough it would be muscle to ward off anything would be any ATM Brumaire. If they trust us, their help will be invaluable. Um, oh, do they trust us? They do trust us. Their approval is 78%. 50%. China actually likes us too. Are we technically not brother nations with us? Guangdong relies on Guangdong only. The police are not prepared. We've actually helped destroy their influence quite a bit. Um, with the police, though, like. 
Uh, it's going up by 1.34, which is not bad. It's still the lowest out of everything, but... Ah, actually, it's more than the Kenpai Tai support. It's actually pretty decent. Um, I don't know who to choose. I kind of want to rely on ourselves only. Japan Trust, we've been very good, so maybe we're going to ask them? I, I don't know, maybe? Also, we were back in the past a little bit. I accidentally skipped a few thing or two, so... Uh, and Passage of the Development Act, of course, once again. And check on the amusement, of course. Good. And then, investing in our future, of course, too. Now to take weaponry, which is fine. I'll let them go out just a little bit. Oh, and up here to Tokyo. Morito Akeo shook Consul General Takashima's hand, and they proceeded to sit across from each other inside Takashima's office. Takashima was first to reach the reason behind the reason after uh, <clears throat> the formalities were exchanged. What brings you to my office outside of the usual scheduled visits? The chief executive replied, A concerned Guangdong security in the recent incidents that I'm sure you're aware of. Takashima nodded and Morito Akeo continued. The recent incidents are harming the investor climate in the region. However, our security services believe there may be a link we wish for you to look into. It is in their opinion that interference into the investigation may be originating from Manchukuo. We would ask you to look into the potential evidence that may arise from studying the recent activity of Hitachi in Manchukuo. Takashima was silent for a moment as he mulled the appeal over in his head before eventually responding. It seems that like it would be in Tokyo's best interest to look into the matter. I'll contact some individuals I know to see if I can be done discreetly. I'll notify you if anything of note turns out. Thank you, Consul General. Decreases corruption, increases Japan's approval, and decreases by the C by one. Okay. Let's start off from there, which is fine. Um, 22, 22. We're about to get another boost here, too, which is awesome. Um, we have 30. Mm, we'll put some more research speed. I want to, but this is still good to do as well. Fine. How are we doing down here, too? So now what do we do? Debts and taxes. To spend money, we must raise money from those who have the means to pay. It may be controversial, a little benefit if we fail. Think about our next choices. 36 seats. Guangdong Future Fund. Public Finance Ordinance. Guangdong Future Fund. We must grow our financial resources so that we may have plenty in the future. Time in need of it. Increases our seats by one. This does not increase our seats by one at all. Our investment in its people. Increase like a reserve as increases corruption by a little bit. Our corporate benefactors means should be reminded of their obligations to the public. Poverty begin to rapidly improve through soup kitchens and schools. Decrease the Sony's and Chong seats. Oh, that's too much, man. Healthcare quality will begin to improve too, which is good. But our seats are very tough to go with already. We'll probably go with this one, the Guangdong Future Fund, because we do get a seat <clears throat> and we get more stability, which I do like. The proper way to use our accrued five skulls to plus is to put them to use in the markets, growing a rainy day fund for when the economic cycle inevitably turns against us. Create an asset management fund with express mandate of managing and growing our accumulated surplus so that emergency funds can be available to the government when needed, subject to the oversight of the Legislative Council. This concept of sovereign wealth fund might rankle some of the corporates the wrong way as it gives the government independent source of financial power that they cannot directly control, but it is conceptually sound and unlikely to impose any incremental burden to them either. The findings. Previously, we conclude we can only make the assumptions about Camp Pai connection to the incident at the warehouse. We know that we, uh, they were connected somehow, but we didn't know who to who and what exactly they were doing. Yet, Chief Executive, the report underlines clearly what's happening. Police Commissioner Omori, sitting opposite of the Chief Executive, thumbed through the report. Itachi made middle, man, man, middle management caught inside a warehouse, tried to take an officer hostage in exchange for clear passage. Dead? You couldn't get him alive? How could he have been great news to us? He could have been. We believe, based on the information that we had, that the employee was sent as a sort of observer from Hitachi to oversee the operation. He appeared to have executed a police officer, so our men opened fire to prevent more casualties. It turned out the officer was unharmed, and the employee merely staged it to look like he'd been shot. We do not know why, but our lead leading theory is that he wanted to prevent his relatives and Koshu from being affected by the treachery. So he took the easy way out, fool. Morito Okeo mumbled before raising his voice once more, no matter. That's darning enough, darning enough to know that I'm not being paranoid anymore. Hitachi and Ken the Kenpai Tai, and God knows who else are in league with each other to undermine me. Looking at what they did, it seems that they were getting their sandals wet from the cross in the Rubicon. It reads like a coup plot. The plot is supposed to be a real threat to the security Guangdong, yes. Times of the urgency. They must be stopped, Chief Executive. The Commissioner, straight in his bag, ready to receive the orders for a complete crackdown. Regardless of a violent purge, these unsavory individuals would only make us look weak, incompetent, unworthy of sovereignty, perhaps. The diplomatic ramifications of such an endeavor would most likely get us replaced, regardless. <coughs> Chief Executive, the Commissioner slouched slightly, unsure if he, if he was overstepping his boundaries. What do you propose we do? I'm going to check the camp by tie. While I'm at it, can I have someone give me the number for the Japanese Consul General? Which we kind of already did, so the other event should have fired after this one. Recall in 1955, December? 
Here are all the counts, warehouses, and prototypes are accounted for. Suddenly, Ho pushed a manila folder across the folding table, his voice reverberating back in the room, in the back room of the Mahjong parlor. All of them, Lee said, unable to hide the skepticism in his voice. The Fujitsu debt collectors nearly found it several times, and I found a few of them. Read it. Stanley reclined in his chair, smiling to smugly. Everything you left behind, we kept safe for you. Stanley's right, Marie to breathe, flipping through the pages. Besides, the caretaker's payments were agreed on. We agreed on everything is where it should be. Once we collected all, we can come back. We can be back in business in under a month. Marie and Lee both cracked very wry smiles at the good news, which heralded an end to the months spent running from his safe house to safe house, struggling with sympathizers in Koshu and beyond. They had weaved through a web of lawyers, gangsters, and even a few campai Thai men. Ibuka had been relentless in trying to secure the spoils of his patent lawsuit. But Fujitsu's attention inevitably shifted back to matters of silicon circuits and boardroom politics. Time was money, and time spent looking for missing men was simply unprofitable. That had prompted Stanley to signal the all clear, bringing Marita and Lee out of hiding. The police and Yakuza know better than to step too deep into my territory, Stanley crowd. Now that all that's left is Stanley Incorporation Peppers, and if Lee suspect uh, because of what happened this year, then Marita's in charge from now on. Hey, Massman's nice. This has definitely been a rougher episode for us. Oh my gosh. <coughs> research speed, research development, and audio to video technology again. Nice. Pretty good. Oh. Five. Where are we at for this? They're at four. We should be okay with not doing anything else here. It's all on representation. This was neutral ground. The most powerful people in Guangdong locked themselves in a room book for some nameless high-rise spire aiming to dominate the Koshu skyline. Gathered in a circle, Maria Kao, Colonel Miyazaki of the Kenpai Tai, General Nagano of the IJ, and Japanese Consul General Takashima collect a police report copy. The chief executive and Colonel Miyazaki were placed opposite of each other, spending their time staring daggers into each other's souls, the clash of wills. Certainly thorough chief executive, Miyazaki spoke, choosing his words with extreme care, but meaningless. Most of this is circumstantial evidence, sir. I think you'll find we've gone above and beyond mere circumstance, Colonel. Morita Akeo first counter attack. That report is 200 pages long. You read it all, no? We have photos, fingerprints, testimony. I would not call that meaningless. Wouldn't you, Chief Executive? Colonel Miyazaki returned with a volley of his own, turning towards the two neutral arbitrators. Consul General, General Nagano, you must see that this is a waste of time. The Kampai Tai have been a force of security and co-prosperity for nearly 20 in the Pearl River Delta. That we could be in a league with the Manchuria to create some sort of factum, it's insane. Insane, the Chief Executive prepared his final offense to finish Miyazaki. It would be quick, clean, and brutal, exactly what they prided themselves on. What is insane is your agents continue to blockade the largest airport in Guangdong and flagging down Hitachi. Both, enough both of you, the Consul General slammed the report down on the conference table. Neither of you seem willing to have a rational conversation, so it seems I must step in. You are like bickering children. I have continued to plot and scheme around each other, then my next report of Tokyo will go into lurid detail and ask them to find out exactly why the Kenpai Tai are doing here and how it comes to that. Do you want that? The room returned to silence. General Nagano cleared his throat and stood up. This war of yours will come to an end, or I will end it for you. A shot to the west. For the moment, shots were reported in the western Guizhou. Gu Guangdong fell into shock. Reports came flooding in throughout the day as a host of intelligence agencies and local ministers attempted to cobble together a and a plan of action. By the time it landed on Morita Akeo's desk, the report had grown into a mess, full enough of retractions and updates to strain the manila envelope it came in. So the basics were clear. Long Yun, a Chinese warlord at once reduced to playing second fiddle to his cousin's government, had reinstated himself and began a campaign to remove China from the sphere by force with the help of the ant allied anti-Japanese armies in the West now. Just a few hours away from Guangdong, a rebellious army threatened to destroy the stability of the entire Chinese region. Despite himself, Moreo, Morito, Morita, Akeo, could not help but feel the weight of the threat, yet his opinion, options were limited. The product testing group and IJA garrison needed to stay at home in case the war worsened. N worse, a note from the Chinese government had been tucked into the envelope, ordering Guangdong not to assist directly, lest Nanjing be delegitimized further. For now, the chief executive would have to waste, stick to putting out fires at home. It will be enough of a challenge alone. Investors, the IJA, the corporations, all would be on high alert so long as the war roared until the war's end. Every man, and woman, and child in Guangdong was the plain truth. A violent end to the corporate experiment lay just around the corner. We sent interest from a fire and we cannot put it out. What a shame. We have uncovered their plans. They're no longer direct that. Thank God. I hate Natachi. Oh, we have enough here to redo this too. 41%, which is better. 50%, which is decent. We're going to lower their support, which is not really good to do for us. But we need, we need the political power at this point. We have to have that political power. 11% growth is not as good as it has been. That's kind of unfortunate. So with that in mind, we can close this as well. We have 16 days left. I want to do this one, but we need we really need to have a pee-pee. Stormy conditions, huh?
1942. It was an evening when they beached the boat on the shore, eastwards, the sun lingered in rose and pink houses, or pink hues, warming the clouds for a final time before descending beneath the mountains and under the curve of the earth. Lamb stood, waiting for the headman of the fishing boat to dive by the catch's day's catch. Here you go, the old man said, thrusting a ride, roughed dry sheaves of paper money into his hands along with some change before I forget your uncle wanted to see you this evening. Lamb gave a wry smile, thanking the headman. He turned to leave. The four intervening years had not been kind of China, Lamb surmised, in the village where brocades of silks had threaded their way to markets worldwide, now the tradition finished off the hostile waters of the waves of Surabim. Uh, behind him as he lifted one foot before the foot of the other into the dry soil, pa dirt, path. dirt path wound through the wood, leading back to the village. Crooked stripped as the earth grew cold, spare poles uh, mounted with torches lit the way forward. The two houses down from the parents' home. Lamb knocked on the door with his uncle's abode. Come in, a voice said. A shout drowned to a whisper. Candles left the empty floor space where there had been looms and other tailoring equipment. The soldiers took all of it and more. The looms, the needles, the mulberry seeds, everything. Now, even the wooden boards had gone into disrepair, rotting and falling into the grassy void beneath the elevated house. At the end of the work hall was his uncle's room, who was sitting in a chair beside the bed. Bandages wrapped themselves around where his foot was shot four years ago. Good, you're here, the uncle said, coughing. I needed you to take this package of tea to your mother. He handed Lamb a square-shaped package with cryptic characters on the front. Good for your digestion. He glanced at his foot. I'm no good now. I can't even walk to deliver this. Everyone has their bad days, Uncle Lamb said. Not your fault. Lamb stood aside from the door, consumed in thought. It can't go on for this much longer than this, can it? His uncle looked at him. I don't know. I just don't understand. Denial. Check everything and everyone. A tall, stern man placed frantically up and down in the conversation or a convertible classroom. By the time that you, you all go on lunch break, I want the tired of Hong Kong's personal brush over with a fine tooth comb. I want to check, double check, and triple check. Each desk had a typewriter, each equipped with an overworked, underpaid secretary typing as fast as it could every now and then. The orchestra of clacking and paper being ripped out of its seams would give way to silence as each employee would risk a glance from the list of Camp Pai officers that they were given. After a few seconds, a symphony born out of the fear of unpaid overtime, the chair of the Camp Pai higher ups would begin again, its tempo increasing faster and faster. Lieutenant Hayaka Hayakawa, the doors open, revealing the visage of Kono Miyazaki. Have the list for the captains been sorted yet? I've spent two hours telling three second lieutenants that they would be transferred back to Tokyo for the foreseeable future. I do not have the time to waste one more. <coughs> yes, Colonel, he responded. Pointing to the large stack of files sitting upon what used to be a teacher's desk, right now we're conducting a sweep of the entirety of Hong Kong to see what personnel we still have remaining. We should be done within the day. Good, Hayakawa. The colonel stepped closer, putting a hand on his subordinate's shoulder. You make this, and I could get Tokyo to make an exception to the lieutenants being sent to Taiwan. No place for a rising star like you. The lieutenant gave a silent salute, and with a nod of approval from his superior, turned back and sat down himself to a towering collection of papers and lists, each with their own name. Inside of the IJA headquarters, a very different drama was playing out. On the phone with the Hitachi representatives he could get a hold of, he prepared his case. The army had played their hand too far worse. They had shown it to their enemies. The camp by tower were on the verge of an implosion, but he... The little general's job was damage control. This is General Nagano. Get Komai on the line now. He's about to do something very stupid. Yes, he is. Oh, when I do this one... Uh, 30. It's best to wait, though. I'm glad we uncovered the plan, so, but where do we get it? Today, the chief executive, Morita Keo, and his two close associates, Matsushita Masaharu and Li Kaxing, were conferring on the matter of what more could be done for the Guangdong economy. Everyone agreed that money was needed to see that through. What they disagreed over, at times vigorously, was how to get a hold of it. Li argued that the bond should be issued as a stepping stone towards forming a government that functioned less like a board and more like a leadership of the state. Morita had demurred and changed the topic. Then he suggested that whatever savings existed in the government should be immediately re reinvested so that the surplus could be grown to pay for new programs. M Matsushita, on the other hand, argued for a different approach. Noting the anger of the corporate and investor classes towards the government, he suggested that reliance on corporate donations might be a better way than taxes. At this point, Matsushita's tone became conspiratorial, as he said that himself would be willing to contribute, provided he got a cut of whatever came after. <coughs> Morita stroked his chin and contemplated the options in front of him. The decision was his, an investment in his people. Given that the government has some discretion to do with what it wants with the money in the future fund, we chose to invest in the people of Guangdong. To improve the lives of the populace through means tested, return generating programs that will ensure Guangdong is prepared for the challenges of tomorrow. To improve the lives of the people is to lay the foundations for a stronger, more resilient workforce in the future, and to address the desperation of poverty that so draws, often draws them to radicalism. A question of quotas. With the Western insurrection only growing more deadly, reports of refugees have become a constant element of Morita Akeo's daily briefings. A mass ten of cities rose on practically every major road into Guangdong, and by his government's estimation, some 3,000 illegals had entered the nation in just last month. Clearly, the refugee policy would need to be in the short term, yet the question of who to accept was murky. For the chief executive, it pitted two long-held industrial maxims against each other, quantity versus quality, on one hand. Most refugees were completely unskilled farmers and day laborers that could do little for a local industry that could not be done by your average citizen. A policy which limited new arrivals to only educated specialists may provide the best quality. It would require some expense to maintain a largely closed border, but for that cost, Guangdong could extract the best of China while maintaining a limited and effective population on the other hand, though. 
Guangdong always needed a share of labor. Refugees would not only make for acceptable factory workers, but all, also likely accept low pay and provisions without hesitation. After all, they are by definition low woman options. For the cost of their housing and nourishment, an open door policy to keep the factory staff for years without any need for direct recruitment. So Morita Akeo called up the secretary. A decision be made. Qual quantity and let him in. Transport, growth, or Zhujin support, and even more growth. Twice exiled. All roads lead to Koshu. <coughs> I think I want more train support. That's harder to get. Even though we don't get more growth, we'll just use quantity. Smoldering frustration. It's not just not possible anymore that IJ contact said her deal was made when there wasn't a paper trail leading back to us now. Now you are told what you are told. You do what you're told, Lieutenant. Komaj tried to avert his glance from the newspaper on his desk. There was a glass full of the cloudy, colorless liquid. An experimental Hokkaido sake. It was a drink that he served for, reserved for his inevitable victory against all the forces that Guangdong could throw at him. Inevitable. What a word. When the chief executive finds just out just how far your little rabbit hole goes, you expect to get any mercy from him? Either we strike now or we get picked off later. We already have everything in place. I'm sorry, Komaj, there's nothing I can do. Komaj sits down, glaring at the newspaper on his desk. Can't buy tie, implicated in plot? The image on the front of the paper was the chief executive, clear and portraitesque. He was speaking to a crowd adorned with banners and signs, like how a complacent king would speak to his peasants after an attempt on his life, still without empathy, without care, without vision. No, there isn't. There never was. Komai put the phone down without another word, after a few seconds. The Hitachi CEO plucked the phone from its rest and put his finger to the dial. There's still another way. There always was. Yet, as he punched the last numbers in, he felt a way have come over him. How dare the camp out How dare the garrison? The look upon the degenerate waste of Koshu and they deemed it acceptable? He picked up the phone and prepared to speak to his benefactors as the line connected. Komai picked up the receiver and slung it against the far wall, shattering him. Komai Ken Kenichiro put his hands to his face, caressing his cracked skin and seemed to utter something that almost sounded like, How dare I? Hitachi and Koma Kenichiro have exhausted their possibility of trying to coup us. They've also exhausted their Nissan funds, which stops their special annual growth. Thank God, I hate them so much. And the beginning of the 1966 uh, product cycle. We support Sony. So between 10% and 15% and 0% and 35%. That's not bad. Hey, that's really good. 0 to 35%? We got 32%? That's very good. First consumer, VTR. Over an hour playback. Nice. I love Sony too much. Probably. Um, let's see, what are the target markets? So we've done these two twice. Like I said, I don't want to do Italy. Italy sounds like fun. Actually, are, are they in the sphere as us? I don't think they are. Um, are they by themselves? That's Pietro Nenni. He's kind of happy. He's got quite a few puppets. Which means more markets to choose from. Alright, so let's go back to the try to choose normal stuff here. So we'll do this one. Expats, we'll probably do that one. We'll lower that one too, but we'll make sure we get those ones done first. Um, that'll be good too. Shokan, probably not anymore. 5%. Yeah, we'll do that one, and we'll do this one, too. All right. Terrible product quality, though. Terrible. Fair weather friends. Mori Morita Akeo glowered across the table with the two legislative council members sitting across from him. Nemoto Tadamori and Onishi Akihiro, just two of the many cockroaches that had skirted in Hitachi's bed, but with Hitachi defeated and Komai's gamble lost. Now, they were back trying to get into the chief executive's bed again. Who wouldn't want to try to get with uh, a KO? These men were absolutely morally bankrupt. They had no loyalty to anyone but themselves and followed money like pigs snuffling, snuffing for truffles. They were vermin and absolutely unfit to serve, and Morita Akeo was naturally about to accept them back into the fold. There was no other option. The chief executive needed to regroup and rebel out of the chaos of Hitachi's failed coup, and this meant bringing all hands on deck, no matter how suspect those hands might be. Nemoto uh, uh, and Onishi knew it too. Their outwardly contrary expressions barely masked their smug smiles. So on the bow that threatened to erupt from his throat, the chief executive coughed once and shook hands with both men, hidden under the table, his other fist was clenched so tightly that his fingernails drew blood. Welcome back, my friends. <coughs> the call yeah, friends. Thank God this is looking better now. So how are we looking now? Okay, that's not bad. All reads a little lead to Koshu. As uh, the Nissan Rogue Trump rumbled across express, express Lane, Zhu had to admire the roads they drove on, the pavement, the lights, the trucks that made the side of the border strikingly different, electrified and clean, from the moment one crossed over the border. It's a new world, Zhu thought to herself. She prayed it was a better one. From the moment Zhu escaped into Guangdong, she and a dozen others had been shepherded, and a truck headed to Koshu. Supposedly that was where the work was, for now it all meant was a few more hours of standing, now short of short with a crowd of desperate refugees. Zhu wished she could, she could lie down. She'd been on her feet for two days now. As the last hour rolled around, Zhu could finally weather... Consider whether this new line would be any better. It seems safer, perhaps, but she couldn't help but sense the carelessness of this process. What would she arrive at when she landed? Was she about to be thrown into the walls once more? It wasn't a question worth litigating either way. No matter her fate, her old life was gone, and Guangdong was just a few hours away. Finally, a few hours later, the back of the truck rolled open, the crowd of refugees stumbled out on the streets of Koshu. As Yu ducked down and jumped out of the truck, the driver turned to her with a fly in her hand. First word on the paper, Mitsubishi. Who don't want to work at Mitsubishi? We need more product quality, holy crap. We need to do both these as well. 
Um, I don't want to do that one too. Uh, we're not going to have many good options here without spending, really pissing off some people. How's Shokan looking? We have almost, please, no, we might as well do that one then. Ninety days left, because that quality is garbage. It's middling. It's average. Not good. Come on, guys. Let's go. Randy, Ian stared at the conveyor belt. If he stopped for just a few more seconds, the device before would slip past before he had a chance to brand the tire. And a superior supervisor would come sound thrashly thrashing him. He just needed a moment to catch his breath to accept this life. For a second, something had reminded Yan of his old life, of his old farm in Guangxi. It brought him a fourth of a thousand memories. Big and small, powerful and pointless, a life that he once had. And then came the insurrection, the raising, the Guangdong's open doors. The car that drove him down to Koshu, the shower of flowers for Yokohama rubber factory. <clears throat> the last memory came out of bitter, ruined by every monotonous day that followed, but Yan knew those days had been filled with hope. It felt like this, his life was starting over again. He had a life on the assembly line and a way of corroding your soul. Once the putrid smell of burning rubber felt like acid in his nostrils, now even as a stench lingered on his clothes, he barely sensed it. How long had it been since he had seen his wife, his daughter? How long until his machine beside him crushed his hand and consigned him to the streets to rot once more? Yeah, I burned the logo on the tire and it let it pass. It felt like he was burning himself. So his wife must let everything burn. An, an economic, an economy of opportunity. The sun rises on the new Guangdong economy, one where success not measured by a fortune of being Japanese or wealthy Zhujian, but defined by one who takes advantage of the opportunities afforded to them regardless of ethnic origin. Uh, Guangdong is up for business, one and for all, and Morita and Lee wouldn't have it any other way, especially they would add when they had profited handsomely from the whole affair. So with an investment from his people, we should get the event all should go well, get more money, increase his corruption though, which sucks. And with this one, Guangdong used to work for the Japanese, now Guangdong works for his native sons, like Sony and Chong Kong, at their head, and get more growth, and they'll support us more. Research group churns. As a military cargo plane touches down in the rain at a base, the PTRG scientists and military personnel are playing into the wet human knife. The former pusher on boxes were the combat data and intelligence gained from the most recent deployment of PTRG battalions, eager to discuss improvements and changes. They need to be made of the weapons they've been observing. The carrier reports that their spears will need to spend sleepless nights sifting through, making sure that every product that comes out of Guangdong's weapon development labs is not a failure by any and every metric, that they want to be replaced, of course. The data will be processed, with some of it being thrown out as useless, of course. Um, <clears throat> And other bits of it being prized as gold standard. As the dad is loaded onto their vans, they disappear into the neon city skip the dominant the Guangdong Knights. The latter stand in the rain. Awaiting orders from the commanders to return to the barracks, they unload dozens of wooden coffins containing their fallen comrades and the soaked flags covering them offering little protection against the rain. There are no thanks, no rewards having been the guinea pigs for the lab rest for collecting the aforementioned data. The survivors know that as the next conflict breaks, they'll be sent to another foreign land to test equipment that was likely to malfunction and blow up in their face by the commanders. The same ones who watch as entire companies are torn apart in order to see if Guangdong's novel equipment can pass their high standards. Both groups are returned back to their daily duties, knowing that they'd meet at the, on the same airfield again at some point in the near future. Back to normal Guangdong. Due to us fulfilling five combat missions, we gain two more Sony seats, get more liquid reserves, increase the opinion by China and China and Japan by 4%, which is really good. Nice. And get the PTRG profits. Uh, more gr real growth and growth. Beautiful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Not bad, not bad, as we have like no political power, but that's pretty normal. Uh, someone says, you should try a Sony into Hitachi run. Hitachi is definitely dystopian and cool to see, but this campaign also to get, get the strongest GDP possible with the Hitachi run. Um, so it says, there's support, there are options to support Hitachi, because they're the ones of uh, the secret contenders that can become the ruling company of Guangdong eventually. Which would be really cool. Uh, let's see. Someone says, Guangdong is getting better and better under Sony's rule. In addition to me playing in the Guangdong state, I don't seek to unify control under the police force. Because if they control an area, there will periodic reductions in levels of corruption, especially as they are neutral and refuse to support any ethnic group in Guangdong, whether Japanese or Chinese or Zhujin. Someone says, just imagine a social democratic Guangdong. Someone else says, the more ordinances you pass, the more it's Guangdong will become a new jewel of the sphere, though you need to balance Zhujin and Japanese support, which is very true, so. In the meantime, we're just kind of here hanging out, having a good old time, trying to get more development, of course, and trying to, like I said earlier, uh, get more product release stuff, you know, interest, quality, it's kind of middling. I love the Italians. Maybe. Um, I'm sure it's barely going up, but we're looking okay. 63%. That's pretty good. More growth of the police uh, state. More monthly Chinese government support. The Japanese government generally likes us. And the level of corruption is, is a bit high, but you know, it is what it is. As we are doing uh, an investment in its people, of course. Did I read this one earlier? I can't remember. Ah, yes. All shall go well in, ec in op economy of opportunity. So. Yeah, I did read this one earlier, but you know, sometimes you can't pass things. So that gives more money. 5% more corruption, which sucks. Decrease the Chinese and Japanese expats support, but you know, whatever. It's not great. But we do all we must. And must we do. 
Some guys look to finish Prime Minister. They're always electing somebody there. Um, we'll probably do this one next 20. That's pretty good to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's even better to do. No, this one's better to do because you, you get 12 and a half. And then we'll come down here to do that one too. That'd be nice. 56, 62%, not bad. We still have how many, what? One, about one, one and a half months left. Pretty decent. Oh, she'll go well. Uh, Seo Man Tim, an experienced Chung Kong Enterprises stockbroker working for the security branch, arrived for his first day of work at the Guangdong Future Fund in Koshu. The day was clear and the smog was bearable, and the birds were tripping happily on the palatial grounds of the newly established building. <clears throat> The CEO was going to be joining a group of the best financial experts that the government could find from all the companies, from Chong Kong to Hitachi, with a view on investing the government's money and making a killing doing it. CEO reflected on the situation in theory, the fund had a social mission, but it was extremely effectively operating as a government investment bank, continuing to make money for the government no matter what influence the corporations did and did not exert. CEO wondered <clears throat> briefly about the prospect of conflicts of interest as he entered his new workplace. Could he invest in Chong Kong, or could the others invest in their home companies? In theory, if it'd be possible, though it'd be almost certainly be a breach of protocol. See a word for some time about the prospect while the elevator took him to his office. Then he squashed to worry and they said he would invest in Chong Kong after all. What did it breaches of protocol matter so long as the economy kept going up, the markets kept prospering, and the Guangdong kept growing? Sure, the red line of growth would continue to go up, right? See so wrestled with this new doubt for a few seconds before at last squashing it. There's no rules in capitalism. What would there be? So we want to keep passing more stuff. Uh let's see, we would have 41 seats in total, which is not great. More than just survival. Um buying dignity, 43 seats, which is still not great. We have no support from it. Well, I guess. We don't have Hitachi here. I guess we. Oh, Hitachi's still here. You're still here. 51st, 46 seats. New safety rags. Hmm. Increases Chinese support, but gives us more Japan support, but more Zujin support. Buying dignity. More Chinese support. Helps the bottom line of Guangdong economically, increases Chiang Kong's initial support for the ordinance. The question of work hours. Adds limit. Limits maximum work hours. Reduces support. Huh. A minimum wage question. A minimum wage will be implemented for the bottom line. Increases the barriers of poverty. Safety first. And of course, you have disability insurance, you know. Gives cheap insurance options to the disabled, reducing poverty, which is pretty good. Safety first, though. 46 seats. Increases Guangdong safety standards. Increases Sony's initial support for the ordinance. Overhauling the building code. Makes factories more secure and reduces accidents, which is pretty good. Overall. A standard for worker safety. Reduces even more seats. Codify standards for worker safety. Honestly, I might do this one. Buying dignity. Marine and friend come calling. 43 versus safety first. You know what? I'll let you guys decide. Which one do you think would be better? Should we do buying dignity or should we do safety first? I'll let you guys decide over which one we should go in the comments below. Because I like both. I'm kind of leaning towards safety first, but my dude doesn't sound bad. Now we also have the bodies we see. Um, well, we have 49 support, which is pretty good to address suicides. So to tackle the suicide problem among, among the Chinese workforce, increases Chung Kong's initial support for the ordinance, versus the air we breathe for pollution and whatnot. We already have enough uh, seats for that one, too. Tackle the environmental issues among the Zhujian workforce, increases Sony's initial support. Reach out and listen. Open suicide support hotline to save people on the brink, increasing Chinese support. It's not bad, that's pretty good. Spend money. And the value of life. Campaigns about the value of life, increasing Chinese support, of course. And then we have, on this side, what if we want pollution? Water purity control. Increases pollution restrictions on the waters of the Pearl River. Increases China's opinion. Okay. As well as the smokestacks quit smoking. Imposes air pollution standards on the companies of Guangdong. I was kind of surprised it doesn't decrease our growth. Public health ordinance. A minute labor. So let me know which ones we should go with. Buying dignity versus safety first, as well as the bodies we see versus the air we breathe. So let me know. I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. But we'll probably be maintaining our solvency next. If you see the collapse out of anything, it's going to be over on Japan for the means of our government survival. When the flow of money from Japan stopped, Guangdong nearly lost everything, and we're still picking up the pieces today. More worryingly, for the vision of Morita and Lee, half for Guangdong to become reality, the government's expenditures are certainly still grow further. Exploring options for financing the government without the assistance of Tokyo is more than just a good idea. Is the utmost necessity. Our envision program to turn Guangdong into something more than a glorified factory floor will not come cheap, of course. The government's finances must be made bulletproof. And we don't have a ton of support yet, 41 seats, but that's the one we're probably going to do next. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, a subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we have 90% real growth. And we'll see what else we can do with the state of Guangdong and the rest of China and watch it all burn. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of 
your day.